Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection, and we are back in the book of Ecclesiastes. So if you could, take your Bible, and let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 1. We're looking at verses 4 through 11 together this morning. Again, that's Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Let's re read it together. One generation passeth away, and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. The sun also ariseth, and the sun goeth down, and hasteth to its place where he rose. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot under utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which hath been done is that which shall be done. There's no new thing under the sun. Is there anything wherewith it may be said, See, this is new? It hath already been of old time, which was before us. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are come with those that shall come after. And when we come to the passage that we're looking at this morning, he's really expanding a statement that was made in verse in verse 3, he says, What profit hath a man of all his labors which he takes under the sun? Solomon is emphasizing that life without God is an endless, meaningless, repetitive cycle. And our lives are just one small moment in that big, uh, that big cycle that's going on. And basically what, what he's saying is, look, your life is pretty... It's pretty meaningless in light of eternity, or it really, we could say, in light of the way that things go in the world under the sun, if there's not an eternal side to this, if there's not God, if there's not eternity, if there's not a judgment to come, if there's not reward for the labors that you've accomplished, the reality is that life is just this empty, meaningless cycle. And he's going to give several examples of that. And so we're going to look at basically three facts that Solomon lays out that kind of emphasize that life without God is just a repetitive, meaningless cycle. The first fact we'll see is this. Without an eternal perspective, our lives are short and leave little impact on the generations that follow us. In verse 4, he says, one generation passes away, but the earth abides forever. Now, Solomon is not contradicting the fact that the rest of Scripture says that there's going to be a day that Christ is going to return and that the world as we know it today, this fallen, broken world, is going to be abolished, destroyed. God's going to judge the wicked and he's going to establish his eternal righteous rule in a new heaven and a new earth. This, this statement is not contradicting or eliminating that. Solomon is simply looking at how we see life from under the sun. So without a knowledge of God, without a knowledge of eternity, all we do is just look at life as we see it from our own perspective on this planet. This is what we see. One generation comes, another generation comes and follows it. And it just repeats over and over and over again. And the earth just continues as it is. He says, look, if there's not eternity, if all we have is the here and now, then our life, as short as it is, is very insignificant and leaves almost no mark on this planet. He then comes to a second fact that's very interesting. He says, without the creative purpose of God, the natural world is full of examples of endless repetitive cycles. Now, what's really interesting is when we look at the natural world, we can really look at it and we can kind of internalize what we see from two different perspectives. You can take the perspective of David, who says that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his hand and he working day under day under his speech and night into night showeth knowledge and there's no speech or language where their voice is not heard. And what does the psalmist do? He says, I look at creation as the handiwork of God. When I see the repetitive nature of creation and how things just go in cycles, what does it do? It reminds me of the fact that God is constant, that God is steady, that we can trust him, and that those cycles were established by God, and they're sustained by God. And so when the psalmist looks at the creation from the perspective of someone with a theological perspective grounded in truth, what does he see? He sees consistency. He sees order. He sees care. 
But Solomon is not looking at the creation from that vantage point. He's looking at the observer who's not considering God, who's not considering eternity, who's not considering creative order sustained by God. He's looking at the creation from the perspective of a person who does not consider eternity. And this is what he says. Life is full of examples of endless, meaningless, repetitive cycles. And he mentions three different things in nature that are like this. He mentions the sun, he mentions the wind, and he mentions the rivers. He says that the sun gets up and the sun goes down. And the sun gets up and the sun goes down. And we see this over and over and over again. And Solomon says, what's the point? This is meaningless. This is endless. This is repetitive. He says, look at the wind. The wind flows in circuits. It comes one way and it goes back another way. And he says, it just does this over and over and over again. He says, what's the point? Endless, meaningless, repetitive. He says, look at the rivers. He said, this is unbelievable. It rains and water comes out and the water flows into the rivers, yet the rivers don't get full. He says, how is this possible? We have this water cycle where it rains, it flows out into the sea, it evaporates back up into the sky, and it just goes over and over and over and over again. And Solomon says, when I look at this, what do I see? Endless, repetitive, meaningless. That's what life is without God. That's what life is without eternity and the perspective of the Christian. And so when we look at the difference between David saying, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork, and there's no speech or language where their voice is not heard, and Solomon saying, the sun gets up and the sun goes down. The rivers are never full. It just rains and evaporates and it goes over and over and over again. What's the difference between those two perspectives? Is it what people can see? No, they're seeing the exact same thing. It's about the fact that God is in the picture of one and God is not in the picture of the other. And then he mentions a third thing. Without an eternal perspective, the human experience is an endless cycle of pointless labors. You know, he talks about in the first couple of verses we talked about, how one generation comes and another generation goes, but the earth just continues. So he talks about the fact that when you compare us to the rest of, of nature, what do we see? We see that one is constant and one is very short-lived. So he's talked about the fact that when we look at nature, we see the sun and the wind and the rivers, what do we see? We see this endless repetitive cycle. He says, but look at humanity. Humanity is just like the rest of creation. In verses 8 through 11, he talks about several ways that we see this endless cycle of pointless labors when we look at humanity. The first thing he mentions is our work. He says, all things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. He says, work, productivity, comes at the expense of unspeakable labors. Let's say that you start a business. Somebody walks into your store or they engage in business with you and all they see is the one transaction. But the fact is that that business exists because you have worked and worked and worked. Endless hours. You can't even calculate how much time you have spent so that that business is able to be able to do what it does. And he says that's the way that life is. He says anything that's productive is full of unspeakable labors. And so when we talk about something like raising our children, we talk about something like building a business, and we talk about doing something that involves productivity, we recognize that there is unspeakable labor involved. And so what's Solomon saying? If you see something there, you can't even calculate how much time was spent to produce that thing that has true value at least from the perspective of the world. He says, so what's the point? He says, I labor for something and I can't even calculate it all. He then talks about the fact that our senses are never satisfied. He says, the eye is never satisfied with seeing, the ear is never fill filled with hearing. You know, think about something like the music that you enjoyed 20 or 40 or 60 years ago. Are you just satisfied with that music or are you always interested in something new? Well, we're always interested in something new. You know, we can go and travel all over the world and we can see amazing sights. And guess what? We want to go and see more. Why is that? 
because our eyes are never satisfied. Our ears are never satisfied. Our senses never reach this place where we say, enough's enough. I've seen enough. I don't need to see anymore. I've heard enough. I don't need to hear anymore. We don't come to that place. And so we see that repetitive nature that even our own senses just are never satisfied. He mentions a third, and that's the tragedy of human experience. And he really breaks this down quite a bit. He basically says this, people don't learn from history. You can see things going on today that have happened over and over and over and over again all throughout human history. You can find examples of the same kind of turmoil we see in our society today. On every single level, you have seen it at some point in the past. And this is what he says. The first is this, people who make poor decisions have the fruit of their labor stick. He says, the things that have been done, it is that which shall be. <laughs> That's a really interesting statement. When you do something and it's foolish and the decision was not a good decision, you're stuck with the consequences of the decisions that you make. When people make decisions, those decisions have consequences and they stay. And this is one of the tragedies of human experience. People who make bad decisions have to eat the fruit of those bad decisions. And by the way, the people that follow them have to eat the fruit of the bad decisions of the people that went before them. And he says, this is a tragedy. He mentions the fact that people don't learn from their own poor choices and the poor choices of others. He says, there is nothing new under the sun. He says, you think that you've learned something for the first time. And guess what? It's happened before. It's the same old idea packaged in a different way. And so really all the problems that we face and all the ideas that people have, they really are not new ideas and they're really not new problems. The question is, why is that? Well, the reality is it's because human nature is constant. The same fundamental roots of those decisions and ideas does not change. You have one generation come, you have that generation go, you have it replaced with a new generation, and it just goes over and over and over again. But what do we see? Humanity fundamentally by nature is the same. And so we see the same problems, the same ideas, the same tragedies repeated over and over and over again. He says, that which has been done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereby it may be said, see, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. The idea is that what we experience today is just a repeat of past generations. And so what's his point? If this is really how life is, then it's pointless, it's meaningless, it's repetitive. It's just like the sun coming up and the sun going down. It's just like <clears throat> the, the, the river flowing out into the sea and it just continues to flow and it just never fills up. He said, it's just like the wind. It's just like the fact that what we see, we're never satisfied and what we hear, we're never satisfied with. And then he brings up one final thing that's very interesting. We forget the past and the future will forget us. He puts it this way. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. Think about it this way. The other day I saw my children had a little toy sitting on the floor and I picked it up and I said, what is this? It was, it was some kind of a toy that had trivia questions on it. Well, what's really interesting is this trivia question, this little flip card thing was something that had been that had been developed in the 60s. I have no idea how my children got it. Well, anyway, when I'm looking at this little this little trivia toy that my children had from the 1960s, I see that all of these little cards have a picture and a name of the vice presidents of the United States going back from the 1960s down into the 1800s and even all the way to the time of George Washington. And you know what's really interesting? I hardly knew the name of anybody on, that, on those cards. Hardly any of them. And by the way, you probably don't know them either, okay? How many of you remember who ran for president 
20 years ago and lost or 40 years ago and lost. The truth is you lived through that history and you forget about these people's names. You forget about the controversies and all those things. The truth is that we forget the past. People that were extremely influential, people that made huge decisions that actually impact our lives, even to this day, we don't even know their names. We don't know anything about the circumstances that they lived through. We don't know anything about the reason behind why they did what they did, yet we're living with the fruit of their decisions. And he says, that's the way life is. We forget about the past. Those who went before us, we don't even know their names. We are standing on their shoulders, yet to us, they seem completely insignificant. And he says, here's the tragedy of life. You one day will be one of them. <laughs> Go think about that. There's going to be a day if Christ does not return in our lifetime that those in the future will not remember us. Our lives seem so meaningful right now. It seems like what we're accomplishing or what we're doing is so important, but the reality is 50 to 100 years from now, if the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't return, many of the people living at that time will not even know our names, will not know anything about us. He says this is one of the tragedies of life. He's really establishing the fact that if there's no eternal perspective the human experience is an endless cycle of pointless labors. So here's the question. How in the world is what Solomon has said here in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 practical for us? And here's what I'll give you this morning. Life without God and eternity is tragic. Life without God and eternity is pointless. Life without God and eternity is monotonous. But I have good news for you. There is eternity and there is a God in heaven. And the truth is that what gives our lives value is not the fact that we have a certain amount of time on this planet. It's not about whether or not people know who we are and what we did. It's not, not it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that, that our names will be stuck in history for generations. What matters is that God cares about us right now. And the truth is that when we talk about life under the sun, it is pointless if there is no God. But there is a God. He sent his son to die on the cross for your sins. He cares about your life. He is personally involved in your life on a day-by-day -day basis. As you're caught in the monotonies of life, God is personally, intimately involved in your daily lives. He actually cares about what goes on. And so we need to recognize that without God in eternity, life is pointless, tragic, monotonous. But there is a God in heaven, and there is an eternity. But I want to leave you with this final thought that's so very important. Even the Christian can be pulled into this kind of thinking. A Christian's perspective, if not constantly being guided by the scriptures, if it's not walking with God in a healthy manner, can become very much caught up in this monotony, tragic, pointless view of life. And so I want to ask you this question. How do you view life today? Do you view it as tragic, pointless, and meaningless? Because if you do, that means that your eyes have been pulled away from God in eternity. You're not walking with God as you ought and as you can. And so I'd like to challenge you this morning to get your eyes fixed back on God in eternity. If all you're doing is looking at the moment and looking at this physical world, you are going to struggle in life. And that's why God gave us his word. And that's why God gave us his people. And I want to encourage you to focus on what really matters and what is eternally significant. Let's bow together for a word of prayer and we will look forward to talking next time. Father, I pray that you'll bless each person who has the opportunity to watch this video and listen to this devotional thought. I pray that you would encourage them through what is here, that we would recognize that there is meaning in life because you give it to us. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, it's been good to see each of you this morning. I hope that you'll just share a word of encouragement, perhaps share this with a friend uh, who can be blessed by it, and we will look forward to, Lord willing, uh, going through the next section of Ecclesiastes tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye now.